Okay. Hi guys. You ready? Okay. So today I want to talk about uh, what we do in, in uh, for the front end in Calibra. So uh, and how we use React Relay and, and GraphQL. And uh, my colleague Piotr will start now with some introduction about the company. All right, okay, guys. Let me know if it's uh, uh, not loud enough. Uh, so my name is Piotr. Uh, this is Grzegorz, but you can call him Greg as we do at Calibra. Um, and if you want to uh, meet us after this talk, uh, please uh, find us at our booth uh, here at Code Europe. In terms of the agenda, uh, I'm going quickly talk about who are we in Calibra, what do we do, uh, what kind of software we use, and why actually React. And Greg will walk you through some technical concepts, uh, technology stacked, and uh, some cool demo and in-product examples. Um, so quickly about us, uh, I'm backend engineering manager here. I was involved with uh, architecture and the design of uh, development of uh, backend services. And Greg, of course, was uh, as front-end architect. He was in the middle of introduction of this trio, uh, Relay, React, and GraphQL for us. Um, I'm here for three years with Calibra and Greg, as you can see by his photo, a bit longer. Um, so uh, a quick question maybe before we start. Uh, how many of you have heard about Calibra before coming here to New uh, Code Europe? If you could raise a hand. Uh, all right, uh, as we said, less than half, so good. <laughs> good that we prepared something. Um, so quickly, uh, Calibra is a Belgian enterprise software company. Uh, we are not services company. We have our own product, which we sell as, uh, as cloud or uh, on-premise. Uh, Calibra was founded as a spin-off of uh, VUB. Uh, which, uh, which was based on uh, semantic web research uh, created at the university. We have sites right now in Brussels, Wrocław, uh, New York, London, Paris, basically going everywhere. We are about 250 people strong uh, and growing very fast. Uh, just to give a number, uh, like three years ago, we were about 40 people. Uh, now we grew quite a lot. Uh, we are about 70 people in engineering and 40 people in Wrocław. In Wrocław, we have our main, uh, one of the main engineering sites. Um, if you have heard about uh, Calibra, probably you heard about our uh, Series C founding round that we closed this year. It was $50 million founding from uh, such great companies as uh, Iconic Capital, which is backed by, uh, uh, by a Mark Zuckerberg uh, found, um, Battery Ventures or Indec Ventures. Mm, we're also uh, quite proud of being recognized as Forrester Gartner leader or the fastest growing uh, company in Belgium uh, in software sector this year. Uh, but uh, let, let's say, what, what do we do? Uh, we actually operate in a space called data governance. Uh, not to go too much into details, we help uh, people find, understand, and trust their data. Uh, but what's probably more important to you, it's what kind of uh, software do you use? As I mentioned, we are a web-based platform. So we are based on uh, Java 8, uh, Spring, Hibernate, and Postgres. Uh, for NoSQL storage, we are using Lucene and migrating right now to Elasticsearch. We're also introducing Apache Kafka for uh, middleware, uh, for messaging communication between our modules. And for Cloud, we, of course, based on AWS. Um, for, yeah, we, we use a lot of other cool stuff that we found useful uh, for our product. But this talk is going to be focused mainly on, uh, on our front end, so TypeScript, React, and GraphQL. Um, maybe just to mention, we didn't start with stack like this. As you may imagine, we started with uh, server-side rendering, velocity template, and, uh, and jQuery uh, combination, uh, which didn't work out that well. So around 2015, when we started introducing React into the product, uh, we're focusing on how to, how to really provide the data uh, to, to the front end. And then uh, we found out, oh, this cool thing, uh, GraphQL and Relay is coming out. So a brave decision was made uh, by our architects. So uh, one week after the release, <laughs> we took the version of Relay and our uh, fetching service uh, for GraphQL uh, in Java and basically make it work, made it work. Uh, there was not much support, as you can imagine, on the Stack Overflow was empty. <laughs> and uh, this talk is basically based on, um, on our experience from those two years. Um, front at Calibra, Greg. OK, thanks, Piotr. Um, so quickly, just about uh, my role. So I'm the front, in the front architect, which means uh, yeah, like Patrick said, I, I uh, help or actually was uh, responsible for introducing all this cool stuff into Calibra and now actually maintaining and adding more to the stack. So um, 
before actually we start. I'll be switching back and forth between uh, the presentation and the actual code and, and browser because I have some stuff to show. But if before actually I uh, start the presentation, I need to admit something. So yesterday I just got my first 3D printer and I was printing up until like 1 a.m. So yeah, I should um, pr probably pr prepare for the presentation maybe. Um, okay, so uh, the first, uh, what is the agenda? So uh, I want to start first with uh, demoing our product uh, because we have one product which is a web-based application and, uh, and yeah. Uh, then I will go quickly over the technology. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Say you are busy. As you can see. Uh, then I'll go quickly over the te technology uh, stack, uh, like uh, what is it, uh, wh what are the technologies and actually uh, examples for that, for those in the code. Uh, then I'll go over the technical concepts. Uh, the one thing that uh, actually we created uh, in Colibra uh, for uh, React and, and really GraphQL, which uh, is called page definitions. Uh, I'll go over that uh, in a second, and then I'll c actually go over how it uh, how it happens uh, from the code to the browser, uh, like go over all the aspects, uh, and then we'll go uh, into the actual demos uh, and and play with uh, with the code. So for the product demo, uh, this is actually a, a nightly build. I hope it will work. Oh man, we can try something. Yeah, the problem is I, I need to do it in a mirror mode. Uh, 60, well, let's try this. Okay. Uh, let's try. Yeah, let's try one more. Is it better? Yeah, okay, let's go for this. Uh, whoa, but well it's really slow now. What happened? Okay, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the app. Uh, everything you can see here is built with React Relay and GraphQL. So we actually use it in the product. Uh, here's just some, some uh, uh, example of a table uh, and uh, there's a list of some entities uh, that we use in, in our model. Uh, an example of a, a page with some attributes, some menu, etc. And actually, you can see it's React. Uh, if we go to um, to React tool and then see the highlights, and then let's change something. Could you? S did you see that? There's like yeah, it, the highlights are shown. So yeah, these are React components. Uh, so that's the product, and uh, now let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so I need to, uh, first I want to ask you how many of you actually use TypeScript in in production. Okay, <laughs> and uh, what about React itself? Okay, and Relay and GraphQL. Okay, it's not bad actually. Uh, so, about the oh, right about uh, the technologies. So, w what is TypeScript? I'm just gonna summarize quickly. It's a separate set on, on over JavaScript, basically adding types. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> we are live. 
Can you see the codes? Uh, maybe I can zoom it. Is it okay? Yeah, so here's an example of, uh, of TypeScript. So, yeah, uh, our uh, React uh, components are actually uh, TypeScript classes. And uh, what TypeScript gives you, it uh, gives you typing, like you can do a string equals string. And then uh, if you want to do something nasty, like NRI method, and then Okay, sorry for the guys. And then uh, TypeScript can already check during compilation for uh, actually errors, syntactic and semantics errors. I think that's not me. Okay. So that's quickly for TypeScript. Uh, about React, uh, so w what is React? Uh, React gives you uh, the ability to define your uh, structure of your application declaratively build, uh, using building blocks, uh, React components. Uh, the basic idea is that a co component is, uh, you, know, you can think of it as a, as a function that has an input and an output. Input is just some predefined uh, props, uh, so-called, uh, which can be arguments. Uh, for the bot as arguments, and the output is uh, the uh, HTML basically. Uh, in this case, we are using JSX syntax, um, and the file itself is in TS6, so uh, JSX uh, is supported in the TypeScript. Um, okay, and uh, for Relay and GraphQL, uh, maybe I'll start with GraphQL uh, just sh to show what is it, uh, was it about uh, the GraphQLs. GraphQL queries. So GraphQL is a query language uh, on the, the idea is that um, your data can be presented as a graph, uh, so you have nodes and edges, uh, edges basically being relations between nodes. Uh, and what you can do is uh, you define your schema, your domain, um, and then you can actually query, query on it. So for example, we can do something like um, yeah, get list of asset, assets and get an ID and name for it. Uh, and then if you uh, run it, you have the response. Uh, of course, uh, you can ask for all other kind of stuff, like ask for a, uh, for a, for a domain. For this, for us, this is kind of apparent. You don't have to need to know. Uh, and then for a domain, I can ask for a name. And then for uh, uh, that domain, I can go farther down the graph and ask for a, a type, etc. right? And then when you run it, you have uh, the information. So that's just querying. The cool thing is that you can actually um, do more stuff. Uh, so you can also add uh, variables uh, to the queries. So we can actually, uh, for example, uh, Query for an, an exact data uh, uh, for the fields. You can also uh, use uh, limiting uh, and offsets for pagination. Um, and apart from that, which I'll cover in the examples, you can actually do, uh, you, you can mutate that data, not only query it, you can actually change it, uh, add, remove, delete, the usual CRUD operations. Uh, and also uh, GraphQL supports uh, uploading as well. Uh, so that's for GraphQL, and what really is actually, I need to uh, show you an example because uh, oh, it's not something actually that you code with, it's just underneath, but it does a tremendous job. But now I want uh, a little theory about uh, the, the concepts before actually going to the demos uh, so we can understand it more. Um, so about the page definitions. Um, the page definition for, uh, is just uh, a, a file that defines the structure of your page. Uh, this is a JSON file. It has a, uh, it can has it can, it can have a, like um, a tree of modules uh, in a parent children manner. So you can uh, you can declaratively define your structure of your components without actually uh, inside those components thinking about what will be the usage. So this is uh, it just, it will uh, help you decouple more and actually build React app dynamically, which is the basic the, the basic uh, use, use case for us. And uh, the other thing is uh, it has also uh, routing inside. So you can say that 
when when I go to this URL, uh, this uh, page definition will be hit, and there can be many of them. Uh, so I, and actually, uh, what uh, what happens is this is handled by our back backend uh, system, uh, written in Java. Again, sorry for that. Uh, when uh, which will gen when you go to the same URL, uh, it will m uh, check for all the page definitions that match the same URL, merge them using using our algorithm, uh, and outputs uh, a kind of uh, um, a predefined uh, JSON that we. Uh, that we created especially for React, uh, which you cannot see here, but it will be in the next slide. Uh, oh, it will be shown in the examples. I mean, uh, so and the JSON is uh, goes over again uh, our our uh, component, which is called Render, uh, that in the end spits out a React app, like something that you would normally start your application with and and feed to React DOM Render, right? Like app component. So. This is a cool thing. It's the base for a platform that we are building. So this is a thing that actually uh, allows you in, in runtime to inject React components, whole pages, uh, augment pages uh, in, in runtime, and uh, build your actually uh, build your application, your React application. Uh, normally, you could do this uh, with just adding stuff, but the thing is that. In the end, all of the things that you add, uh, like for say, let's say that we have uh, your application built with from five plugins or whatever. That means in the end, you would have five app components on the root level. For us, it's it's a single app and everything is one. So with, uh, with this, we can leverage some cool stuff from Relay, like there's only one initial call, GraphQL call to get all the data for all those plugins at once, etc. And how it actually happens, um, going again. So this, we have some uh, uh, some uh, JSON files that uh, are called the page definitions, defining the structure, uh, which then matching uh, when URL is matched uh, are um, passed to the UI to our render, which is a wrapper over relay, uh, which then. Uh, uh, spits out a component that we can use on React DOM render, which is then just uh, render it on your page. So, and that's how you get it. Uh, in this case, uh, and how we uh, is as well how we do it. We use a Tomcat web server to host uh, some uh, basic velocity files to just jobs to just bootstrap the app. Uh, but in the end, uh, all of the application are actually uh, the, the client is. Uh, uh, run on the or the, or the or the front end is run on the client, only communicating with backend over REST and in our case GraphQL. Uh, and then the other thing is the other part is you have a lot of component uh, TS6 files, uh, which uh, in our case uh, we use Webpack to uh, collect them all and bundle them, uh, transpile them uh, of course to JavaScript, uh, bundle them and uh, host on the for the page to to use. Uh, using web webback dev server, and apart from that, of course, uh, some static files uh, like CSS and etc. Okay, some matrix time. So uh, I'll do a split screen. Hope you can see that. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Quick uh, recap, maybe on on what are React components and and how you do a composition of React components, uh, so we can actually uh, have more background. So let's consider this. This is uh, a box component. This is just a component that renders a div. It has some inline style uh, with uh, predefined background green, some width uh, 100 pixels per 100 pixels, and uh, some paddings. And uh, let's use it now. So, of course, we need to import it. Oh. And uh, you can see uh, we are using uh, AMD named AMD. So uh, the the ID of this component is actually the one that is also used in page definition. So all of this is kind of like a unique ID for the component. Um, let's save it uh, and bring up the terminal. And 
Yeah, I didn't use it. <laughs> Great. Okay, it's saving and there's a hot reload uh, attached on, uh, underneath. Uh, so immediately you can see some there's something happen. Uh, so this is just plain component without any props. Uh, how why cannot I do this? Yeah. Uh, but let's let's extend it. So, in uh, how you do it in TypeScript, you need to define uh, an interface that will define. Oh, it's slow. It will define uh, all of the properties that your component can accept. And uh, for example, let's create. A, let's uh, add a possibility to change the background of this box from outside this component. So let's say we have a property called. BG color, which is a string, and then uh, use it here instead of uh, just fixed color. Right. And then when I save it, it will actually should crash because I said that this property is mandatory uh, and I didn't say actually uh, define anything here. Uh, so Let's maybe make it, oh, maybe not. Let's just define the color here. So let's say that the color is actually BG color is red. And let's wait. And bam, it's red. So that's just one component and props. And now for composition. Uh, so let's say I want to do a box in a box. Uh, and and so on. So we'll have a box, and then inside render the same thing again. So red and blue, for example. Uh, so for this, we need to do one change because uh, we need to tell or the f implement in the co the component uh, what do we do with the actual children of the component. So we need to use something special for of React, which is called this props children, which is a special props that is always on your component. And this is the place where uh, all the children children in the J6 will be rendered to. So if I now I save it. Yay. Good. And we can add more. And the cool thing is now that you have this uh, the, the, the logic of the box is in the box itself. If you want to change the box now, you can just, let's say that you need to change the padding because uh, all the mockup changed, whatever. So uh, this component uh, it will, it will stay untouched. You don't have to worry about the log logic of the box anymore. So, so in the box, we just change the padding to whatever, 10 pixels. Uh, and all of the uh, used components uh, throughout your application uh, of course, we'll use that. So that's quickly for React. And now uh, let's go over and actually uh, to the Relay and Relay uh, to and GraphQL. Uh, so for the next example, uh, here we can see there is just some boring text. And what it does is, so again, we have simple React component. Uh, showing two texts uh, with a break line uh, between them. And there is this thing uh, underneath, which is uh, um, actually some query, GraphQL query, uh, as you can recall from uh, the, the tool previously I've shown you. Um, and this is the, the thing that really adds. Um, so r r what really does is actually it, it uh, wraps your React components. Uh, as you can see, this component is used here, and the one that actually is exported and used in in, in J6 uh, will be the this one, uh, well, the, or the wrapper of this one. So, um, and here you can see that uh, I, I want to show some. I'm doing some query, uh, getting some uh, user first name of a user and some I, uh, some uh, name of uh, uh, just specific uh, asset. Uh, and uh, 
what Relay also does is it, it will inject into the props, so normally for React, it will inject the, the actual response of that query or, or that, of that particular query. That's the thing that uh, it will not actually give you all of the data of, of your, uh, uh, of your uh, UI, only this. And, and this particular query will not be, of course, accessible for any other components. So that's the encapsulation that Relay gives you uh, up front. Uh, and uh, how does it work? You have this uh, fragments, uh, which is called NPI, and then you have this uh, actually field name. All of that is strict, is, is, is uh, tied to the schema. You cannot actually change it to something else. Uh, it, then it will complain. Uh, so as you can see, I'm doing props, then API, then uh, asset, or in this case, current user, etc. So if I want to change this uh, first name to, for let's say, um, last name, so I recall is in the API, uh, I change it, it's reloading, and the change will happen here. Yeah, you can see, name change from admin to administrator. administrator. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, of course, it's, this is just changing, but you can add more stuff, like uh, right, like um, let's say I wanna, uh, like I did before, uh, here next to the ins or instead of this ID, actually, oh, let me put it always on top. Instead of this ID uh, of an asset, actually show the name and the domain of the ID, right? So as as before in the tool. I'm going to extend the query, adding uh, the, the domain field and name of that domain. And inside, we'll do asset name. And next to that, let's show this props API asset um, domain name. And refresh. And you can see the old component has that data. And uh, if we look at the, uh, the actual query, uh, so this is the GraphQL call uh, that, is, that, that happens. Uh, the headers, uh, it will come in, in the, in, sorry, in the headers, uh, in the request, it contains the query. Uh, and as you can see, it's just gibberish because that's what Relay does. It is actually not sending just a plain query, GraphQL query to the to the GraphQL server. It it needs to add some more stuff uh, to the to the query to actually track which components wanted what, and then to be able to put it back. Uh, and the thing is that uh, because Relay tracks all of the uh, all components that actually ask for data. Uh, uh, when all of the components want some want some different data, it will collect all of the queries. Uh, merge them into one, uh, redu uh, remove all the duplicates, and only say, send the minified or the the actual thing that you need to you need to have the actual data that you need to have to to fulfill all the UI needs. Like there is no overfetching on or underfetching. That's the the idea about GraphQL. That basically, as far as I know, the use case was for mobile, uh, where they wanted to limit the number of requests from uh, a mobile application and to actually to basically limit the, the overhead, uh, overhead of data being fetched. So yeah, this is the query being uh, sent and uh, for the preview, uh, for the preview, for the response, uh, we have the actual data. As, and as you can see, there is actually uh, some, uh, there's the, actually the, the query is very similar to the one from the GraphQL tool, but there's this uh, ID here, and that's actually uh, the internal IDs of the components being tracked. Uh, so yeah, that's the response and query. And then let's go over to some uh, more complex examples. And here you have these cool boxes, green boxes. And this is just a list of assets. So let's say I want to, uh, basically my use case is I want to render a list of assets. Uh, and uh, for each asset, just render a name. So normally you could just do one component and uh, of course uh, in that component just go over the loop and render it. But this actually is a good, uh, it's a good chance to actually do some uh, split of, uh, of the logic and actually do a hierarchy or really container compositions. So here you can see that we are doing the assets query again, uh, calling for uh, assets, first 11 assets. 
And then we do this uh, magic, which, which is uh, not actually uh, asking for um, like specific data that my component, uh, the, the asset component, will use, which is used here in in JS6. Uh, just it, it just telling relay that this components need this data, and I don't care what it is. So. And here in the JS6, you can see that I indeed I loop over the response, just um, uh, map over the, the connections of the GraphQL, but I just render an asset component, and I don't know what it does inside. So, um, and the, the thing is that uh, there's a few things actually do you need to, to do to make it work. Uh, if you want to use uh, relay, relay containers inside relay containers, is to actually two things. Uh, first, you need to uh, add the fragments in, in the query, and then actually pass the the name of the fragment, as you can see, asset here, back as a props to the React. If you don't do that, relay will complain uh, with warnings uh, about the, the uh, fragments being missing. So. So that's it for the list component. As you can see, there's nothing about the uh, name of the component here or uh, what calls, whatever. So if you go to the asset, uh, and here you can see that uh, here actually, uh, I'm saying that I want to get uh, an, an ID and a name of an asset type. But I'm not specifying anything that it will be used in a list or anything anywhere, anywhere else. Uh, I don't care. I just need this. Uh, so you can see there's this uh, idea name, and uh, I'm uh, rendering, uh, or actually rendering in the JS6 the name, but I can render ID as well. So let's do that now and recompile, and see where our lists will uh, show. And yeah, you can see uh, name changed to some UIDs uh, that we use. So that's the hierarchy composition. Uh, then. GraphQL itself and Relay gives you some, uh, like I said, uh, some things that you normally do in UI, like you need to filter for data, you need to do pagination and crowd operations. So uh, for the f filtering, uh, there's this thing that normally you can, uh, like I showed before, you can add uh, arguments to the query. So let's say that uh, I want some data actually that will match this uh, argument and uh, yeah, they are much, they are different. Uh, this is not upfront, uh, available upfront. You need to actually implement it in the assets field. Um, and how you use it from the, uh, from the React component is that um, you pretty much the same. You have the query, you have a name, but instead of passing an actual, uh, just a, a fixed string, you say that you want to use a variable here. It's a called a relay va variable, and it's all as well predefined here in this manner if I, in initial variables, uh, where you can pick a, just a default value. Uh, and the way it does is, um, so you have this text, in, text input component. If you look at the examples, there's this one here, right? Uh, when the value ch value changes, uh, this method on change is uh, run, which is here above, uh, which does this specific relay API uh, function, uh, which is called uh, relay set variables. And uh, what you do here, you pass basically the variables that you predefined here in the query. So I'm saying that I want to change query to be the value of the input. So then. Now let's change this to name, asset to name, so actually we see some results. So then if I type, uh, for example, C, yeah, suddenly uh, the response is different. And uh, if we look at the GraphQL of that call, the query uh, actually now Oh, you cannot see it. Actually, now there's it's it's there. Uh, for the name, actually, it used uh, the C character, uh, and the response went back to the uh, to uh, through the relay to React to render the list. Uh, the cool thing about about relay as well is that it caches all the data and and, uh, and the response. So now, if you look at the the network, if I do C and back. Nothing happens over the network. It's all over the internal cache. 
so it can speed up your stuff. Uh, of course, you can actually force it. You can force it from the component. Say always refetch. Uh, but yeah, but then really will be uh, smart enough to know if I do see a, it will actually do a separate call. Uh, so that's for filtering. Um, then we have pagination. Yeah, don't mind this. It's a bug actually I need to fix. Let's refresh. Always helps. Uh, for uh, paging. So out of the box you have as well paging in GraphQL, although it's, it's a little different. It's based on cursors. It's not uh, an offset limit paging. So uh, the basic use case is that you always load more. So you have the more button. You don't sp uh, sp uh, switch between arbitrary uh, one to three pages. Bas uh, but of course, that was uh, well. We needed uh, we needed that the, the second use case, right? So actually, that's that's one thing that we had to uh, add on top of uh, GraphQL. Uh, as you can see, uh, oh, actually no, I don't have that example. Sorry. But here I have only prev next, which is uh, prev next, which is actually from GraphQL. But um, basically, what we did is we added uh, an offset uh, and limit uh, to the to the GraphQL variables, to the relay variables. So Bucket knows what it means and actually uh, bring back the the actual data uh, for the pagination, uh, which works pretty well. Um, okay, so. Here, actually, it's some more examples about variables. Uh, the numbers here are not pagination, they are limit. So I'm changing the limit of, of data that being brought back. Uh, and then pre previous and next uh, actually uh, gets you more uh, more data. And this one actually uses uh, uh, the offset and the limit. So if you look at the, uh, of the, uh, of at the JS6 of those components, so we have these buttons here. Uh, it's an our in our internal our, uh, UI toolkit, and that's why it's called flat button. Uh, so we have this f uh, flat button here and here, and uh, for the pref next we have these buttons that do uh, those f uh, methods on pref and non next, which basically like previously just called relay set variable setting offset. Uh, so it's it, it, like normally uh, the offset is uh, incremented with uh, adding limit to the uh, current offset, so we get. Uh, you, you get uh, 20s and then you get uh, 20, oh, sorry, 22 and then etc. If we fetch 11, I mean. Uh, okay, so that's pagination. Um, so that was querying. Uh, now I have an example of an actual adding data to GraphQL. Uh, so we have again a list uh, of the components and underneath, well actually I should, Oh, yeah, it's not going to be that easy. Oh. Underneath you have an input and an add button. And uh, what you can do here is put uh, a name of your asset. Uh, yeah, I should have picked some better names, but yeah. Uh, if you click it, you see that actually it, it was added here. I can add one more. And the cool thing is uh, when we look at the code, uh, it's called asset add that I'm, oh. uh, the cool thing is that actually uh, th this assets list components, the, the, the green thingy, is actually exactly the same as previous one. I didn't do anything with it for this uh, adding. Uh, this works out of the box uh, because I'm uh, during the, uh, using the, the GraphQL and Relay, I'm saying that I'm, I'm interested in the assets field. But I, I don't care where it, will it come from and, and when we, and, and how often it will uh, be updated and when and, and to be able to uh, refresh myself again. So all of that is happen is done by relay. So it, uh, what you do is you use this API called mutations. Uh, this is this uh, specific thing uh, called relay commit update, and you pass a specific class. Uh, to that uh, to that uh, function, and if you look at the class, uh, this is very specific for GraphQL. Uh, I'm not going over all the detail details because uh, yeah, it's uh, sometimes just hard to get uh, uh, just uh, at glance. Uh, basically, what it does is y you define what you change and what are the arguments that you will send over. And also, uh, the, the most important thing, I think, is that you define here the, the FAT query, the so-called the FAT query. Uh, so 
you need to tell Relay what are the fields from the schema, uh, what are the fields uh, that uh, what are the fields that will be affected by your change. So it's not that Relay will automatically know. Uh, you need to tell it, but it's good enough that you can tell actually that the, the assets will change. But you don't say that uh, this specific asset or uh, or just say an asset underneath is just anything related to assets fields. And then here, for example, you can say that if we do this, we can say if we change something about current user, we can just say if anything happens to current user on anything down the road to GraphQL, in GraphQL just refresh my component. Okay, so that's that, that. Um, and if we look at the, again, at the GraphQL. So there's this uh, query, uh, it's a prefix with mutation. Uh, Yes, Ras. Yeah, but oh, it's a little better. Actually, there is a relay uh, tool for DevTools as well, but at some point they just broke because they changed the API, and uh, from that point we don't use it anymore. And now with relay modern, actually, the API changed completely. Yeah, so you can see there is this uh, mutation here and the variables. Uh, variables are the parameters, the parameters, uh, predefined parameters that I'm sending, and what I've uh, typed before is uh, in the input is this, uh, the name, uh, and it's being sent over uh, to the GraphQL. Some stuff happens uh, in the on the service level, uh, level, and then on the database, uh, and directly with the same response, which is another cool thing, with the same uh, request, uh, you have the response that actually gets data back. Uh, and you can see already there is this uh, updated uh, list of assets uh, already containing our uh, thing. I think it's number three or something. Uh, so if you do this mutation, it's not like suddenly there's a flood of requests because everything wants to update. No, that's the cool thing that there's, uh, well, there should be at least one, there should be uh, at most one, but uh, it, it depends on the use case, of course. Um, so again, it's good cool for optimization. Then again, I have this uh, very beautiful example. Uh, we has a lot of them, or actually all, uh, probably everything uh, uh, in one. Uh, and now I want to show that uh, about the cache again. So let's say that my component uh, wants uh, or renders a name of a specific asset uh, and I have a lot of those components uh, in UI. Like this, this component wants a name. This wants a name, but uh, but maybe in a little different query. But again, then again, we don't have to worry about that because if we uh, because relay will actually know uh, and and put the beta, uh, the data back as I said. So if I change here, you can see I, I'm changing here, and actually this one changes as well. And uh, yeah, I didn't have to do anything for that. It's just out of the box. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much for the demos. Uh, now a quick recap. So why the page definitions and this approach? Uh, so as, as Piotr said, we started with uh, with the page definitions and velocity jQuery templates. Uh, uh, velocity templates and jQuery, uh, but then again, uh, when we actually saw that there is this uh, cool way to actually declaratively build your app with React components, which is the perfect example for our plugins that will extend your application, and then that there is uh, this cool system to actually fetch data uh, to that components, we, uh, we just picked it uh, and thought that well, we, we knew that it's perfect for us. Uh, we started our own uh, thing, trying to uh, solve the get the data problem, uh, but yeah, it didn't end well, and uh, it's good that we actually picked with GraphQL. Uh, so the, and the cool thing is that, um, as I said, 
uh, if we uh, then we are oh, if we are want to go to uh, to towards a way where we can actually at runtime uh, extend your application uh, and probably for that we will use uh, some uh, backend uh, framework like OSGI on we'll see. Uh, but again, the the, the props uh, pros of that of that is that we can actually build dynamically a full React Relay GraphQL application that is just one at, in the end, uh, which I think is cool. Uh, so then again, uh, we can limit actually number of data being fetched, and so we can resolve the underfetching and overfetching of data. Previously, we had. Uh, we were actually getting data through uh, through REST, like through CRUD methods. We had our own UA model to fetch, like get me assets, uh, get me whole asset. So and then from that we only picked some data in the UI. So there's what uh, was a lot of overfetching. Uh, and then uh, with that, uh, with page definitions as well, we have the the routing mechanism, which which we can extend uh, in at runtime uh, as well. So you can we can add whole applications uh, with actually without actually um, reloading everything. Uh, with that, we can also uh, give uh, integrated security and permission mechanism mechanism on the page definition level. So we can actually we can predefine what is uh, was actually sent to the UI uh, on the on the server side. So we can actually limit the stuff that you all will render back there, not on the client. Um, what else is that uh, with this approach as well, or, or in general React, uh, and in, in our platform, we are working on a uh, UI toolkit uh, that we will be using in, in our plugins, uh, which will also be uh, provided in the API. Uh, and in the end, uh, based on the, the, the backend routing mechanism, we have our own single page application mechanism. Uh, which uh, basically speeds up everything because we don't have to reload all the time, right? Okay, that was that. I don't know if, what's what's my time. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Uh, questions? Uh, microphone. Okay. Uh, so, how can you? Um uh, as I saw, uh, all of the components are smart components because you have uh, GraphQL stuff in them, right? Well, not so not all not all of them. I mean, I, I've shown you those that are actually uh, that are smart, as you said. But we have just plain React components as well, like just dumb React components to and show button how, whatever. How then do you fetch data? Are you uh, waterfalling it down from other components, or do you have a service that's synchronizing with GraphQL and serving it to components, component instances? Uh, I don't know if I get it correctly. What do you mean by waterfalling data? Because uh, passing uh, down as input to another component, it, like you normally you would you would do in React. So yeah, if you want to like like as I shown you an example, you have you get some value from a text input, and and then as a props you can just uh, like like uh, put it back to or give it to the other component, etc. Uh, so normally, as uh, we would do in React, there's nothing different around that. For actually waterfalling uh, data through relay components, we don't do that. The relay does that. So we just we just uh, build them, t tell that only, for example, this is the children of this parent, and that's it. Just uh, like a general hierarchy of components, and they actually know they will fetch data for themselves, and relay will actually get one data, one response, and like. Uh, put it uh, to the to the actual components one okay. by one Thank top you. from bottom. Um, hello, is it possible to configure da data polling in Relay? Uh, well, normally you have uh, for polling you have something like uh, subscriptions. Uh, which were always in the specification of GraphQL, but never actually implemented. <laughs> uh, now, uh, in really modern, I'm actually not sure, but I think they use a subscription as well. So it's something like you say that you you do something like query, but you say that you want to su subscribe to it, and it's basically over sockets 
that it will know when to actually get your back the response. So there is no polling. Uh, but for us, without subscriptions, we just basically do polling ourselves. So you can, for example, say that um, you can uh, do a, a force fetch method on, on relay. So uh, normally, if you do props relay set variables, you can do props relay force fetch, which basically says just refetch the query again. And you can do that uh, in a timeout. That, that's just the dirtiest hack you can do. And then pages are partially refreshed. When you get the new data, only the data that has been changed is... Uh, yeah, yeah. Only, only the data this component wanted will be actually uh, requested. Uh, yeah. One more question. So yeah. if there is no change in the data, nothing will be refreshed on the page? Or just no, no, no. Component? It doesn't know anything about data. It just, it just uh, redo the query again. So if there is the same query again, if the data again coming back, it will be just brought back again. So it's like a stupid polling. That's why it's a dirty hack. Subscription is the thing that they actually recommended, is that on the back end, on the, on the server side, you can actually define where the data will be back. So you actually, you, you don't send back data if, they didn't, if it didn't change, et cetera, right? But it's a, it's a com more complex story. Uh, so React won't do the div between the data because I think. Uh, so normally uh, all of the data comes through props, and in React normally you have uh, apart from just render method, you have some uh, 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 other uh, lifecycle methods like a component will receive props, component will mount, and as well you have should component render method, which there which there you can actually check, uh, and you have uh, access to this props and next props, and you can check if name of the asset didn't change, don't do nothing. And then it will skip and not go to into the render anymore. And actually, this is a, it's a recommended way of, of speeding UI and, and, and removing unnecessary updates. And it actually should be used. But uh, then again, if you use it, then you, can, you might have problems that actually you wanted something to be refreshed, but you didn't because you stopped the propagation at, at the, uh, the top. So there are some quirks to React. It's not just like unicorns, <laughs> but it's cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, just one more announcement, sorry. Uh, so, um, yeah, we are hiring, obviously. You can uh, come back to our, uh, go to our booth. Uh, but the, the more, more important is that today at uh, 8 p.m. we are hosting uh, our, an after party in our office. So you can actually come in and talk to us in person and uh, well, just hang out and party. We'll have a bartender and yeah, it will be cool. Everyone's welcome. And it's in our office in uh, basically in the in the in the center near the Nove Horizonte, uh, previously Helios. Um, it's uh, the address is in our booth. Okay, thank you.